Einstein said, if he was given one hour to solve a problem and his life depended on it, he would first spend 55 minutes determining the right question to ask. Many of you ask great questions on Tesla, and in this video, I'll do my best to answer them. Welcome back to Investing in Darren. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. First question, Trevor Ng asks, as someone who is new to investing, how does one learn about Tesla? There is so much information out there. Where does one begin? And is it a must to learn to read financial statements? A good starting point is to ask, what's your learning style? For me, I'm a very visual and experiential person. So I learned a lot through riding the Teslas, talking to Tesla owners, going to the factories, to the shops, and talking to former employees. That helps build my conviction in a way that works for me. If you're someone who likes data analysis, there's a lot to find online. It's one of the most covered companies in the world. Coverage from everything from its products and services, financials, all the way down to its leader, Elon Musk. The main channels of online information for retail investors would be YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit. If there are some channels I would recommend, it would be Tesla Daily on YouTube, Dave Lee on investing, he does a lot of interviews talking about Tesla, Chicken Genius, he's got very good perspective on financial markets and investing. On Twitter, I follow Gary Black because he gives a good look on how institutional investors think. It's not a must to be able to read financial reports ourselves. Otherwise, every financial analyst would probably be far richer than us. Sometimes it can be useful just to tune in to the quarterly earnings call, where we get to see how direct and how confident management is in answering investor questions. Another option is to listen into YouTube channels where they break down quarterly earnings into more simple terms that retail investors can understand. Next question, YGM asks, how does Tesla compare with Apple in terms of overall gross margin? Tesla's gross margin is 27% and Apple's gross margin is 43%. They currently operate in different industries. Here's a chart with industry average gross margins. For simplicity, we we'll put Apple under computer services with an average gross margin of 27%. And for Tesla, we we'll put them under automotive with an industry average gross margin of 9%. Apple's gross margin has been relatively stable, hovering between 38 to 42% in the past 12 years. They've been steadily increasing average selling prices and has also focused more on software revenue, which is higher margin. Tesla is very interesting. You see two dips in Tesla's gross margin happening first in second half of 2012 and second in the second half of 2017. These dips coincide with Tesla launching the Model S in second half of 2012 and launching the Model 3 in second half of 2017. Elon's master plan for Tesla is to build increasingly affordable EVs. The original Tesla Roadster sold for around $150,000. The Model S now sells for around $100,000 and the latest Model 3 and Model Y, the cheapest EVs, sell for around $45,000. When each new model was released, Tesla's gross margins dipped before recovering over time as Tesla gained manufacturing efficiencies through scale and constant improvements. Elon has said that Tesla's production line can see up to 20 changes per week. Can you think of any other company that reduced average selling prices of its products by three times? In Tesla's case, $150,000 with a Roadster to $45,000 with a Model 3 and Model Y and still maintain the same gross margin. That's quite a feat. At 27%, Tesla's gross margin is three times higher than the automotive industry average and Tesla has reported that it is the highest in the industry. Next question, Ng Sejun asks, why is it hard for traditional automakers to transition to EVs? What's the hardest part? And why is it hard for other EVs to catch up with Tesla EVs? To me, a big part of the answer is culture and complacency. Many of these large traditional automakers have been highly successful for many decades. It's very hard to create a new car company and they believe that they had strong modes. I think of it like the phone industry. Nokia and Blackberry were so dominant and they laughed at Apple and iPhone at first before eventually trying to catch up when it was way too late. I see the same thing playing out now in the automotive industry. Many of these traditional automakers have ICE car factories around the world. So they have huge sunk costs and transitioning them from ICE to EV manufacturing is very hard. On top of that, traditional automakers usually sell their cars at low margin and make more margin selling parts. The challenge with EVs is that they have far fewer parts and their parts break down less often. Traditional automakers find it hard manufacturing EVs in a profitable way. The CEO of Ford recently said that they don't have the right skill set yet and are trying to change that. This also explains why many years ago, GM halted production of its EV1. While the entire industry is now transitioning to EVs, and there are more native EV companies like Rivian, Lucid, Neo, and Xpeng, very few of them have the speed and agility that Tesla has. A big part of it is because of Elon Musk 
what takes other car companies six to nine months to decide on, Tesla can decide within a few days or even one night. Manufacturing EVs at scale is still not yet a fully solved problem. Elon has said multiple times that prototypes are easy, manufacturing is very hard. Because of that, Tesla's agility gives it a big lead and it's hard even for native EV companies to catch up. Next, Bunti asks, what's so special about Tesla's 4680 battery cells compared to competitors? The 4680 battery cell is called so because it's 46mm in diameter and 80mm in height. What makes it unique is that it's designed from the ground up for high scale and low cost. One of the biggest challenges for EV manufacturers is finding battery supplies and raw materials. And for many batteries in the past, they required cobalt, which is a toxic material, and most of its supply from the world comes from one country, Congo. It is not the most stable government. So there's a lot of risks relying on just one country, and so the Tesla team decided to rebuild the battery architecture from the ground up. By doing so, Tesla's 4680 battery cells, together with a new vehicle structural battery pack, is able to reduce the cost per kilowatt hour by 56%, while reducing the manufacturing footprint by almost 10x, and also being less toxic to the environment and using a lot less wastewater. Tesla is uniquely able to do so because of its high vertical integration, which most automotive companies do not have, with the rare exception of companies like BYD in China. Next question, Ang asks, does Tesla's dispute with the SEC worry me, or is it a distraction? It's not a big concern for me. It is an unnecessary distraction. This ties back to a question some of you asked before. What is Tesla's biggest risk? For me, by far the biggest risk to Tesla is China. China controls 80% of the world's battery supply. And in the highly unlikely scenario that China decides to invade Taiwan, this would make life very difficult for Tesla because Shanghai is its global export hub. Next question is from Zihao. Gary Black mentioned that FSD take rate is declining globally. It is 13.9% in the US and 7.3% globally. Would this have a negative effect to Tesla's share price in the short to midterm? The short answer is no. Most institutional investors do not price in FSD on their Tesla stock valuation. If anything, FSD represents significant upside if it proves successful. Many people want FSD beta, it's shown significant gains. And FSD beta just rolled out to Canada this weekend. Another FSD question by Mavi Stocks. Do you think FSD would ever be able to drive like a human with zero interventions? How far away is Tesla from this? My answer is yes. The bigger question is under what conditions. It will start at high reliability on bright sunny days at low speeds on well-marked roads and slowly build confidence over tough conditions like rain, snow and fog as it gets more training data on edge cases through the millions of Teslas around the world. Machine learning also has the capacity to learn faster than humans. Consider when you first got your driver's license to your driving skills today. How much have you improved? Maybe two times or three times over your entire driving lifetime? For FSD beta, it's likely to make a two times improvement once every 12 to 18 months. Another FSD related question, Vignesh asks, what's your take on Tesla not using LiDAR and relying only on vision and neural networks to get to level four autonomy? Elon has said that LiDAR is a seductive local maximum, which I interpret as being very effective in the Joe Fence area, but hard and expensive to scale more broadly. Gary Black feels strongly that LiDAR should exist side by side with vision. I think of LiDAR like a walking stick. If you have good eyesight and can understand the signals from your vision, a walking stick is redundant and not that useful. If anything, it could even slow you down or confuse you if you had to confirm all signals with the walking stick first. Next question, Clarence and Vignesh ask, how would the Ukraine-Russia war impact Tesla? Would Tesla flourish instead? We can see the automotive industry being impacted. Volkswagen halted production for a few days because of supply chain disruption from Ukraine. Tesla is 80% vertically integrated and they have an agile culture which allows them to adapt much better than competition. We saw that happen in the past two years in a semiconductor shortage, where Tesla is able to repurpose and reprogram their own chips. I think of Tesla as a battle-tested team, going through multiple wars in recent years, like the Model 3 production ramp, while other large automakers have been in complacent prosperity for many decades. Tesla was the first major American automaker in more than 100 years after Ford and GM. Recent political events will also accelerate adoption of sustainable energy, like how COVID accelerated e-commerce. The next time a European car buyer considers buying a car, they're going to think very hard before buying an ICE car because they do not want to support a hostile nation that's providing them energy. This is going to help Tesla. Stephen, Hangry and Sinking asks, what are my buy and sell conditions for Tesla stock? I'll reframe this in two parts. When I'll stop buying Tesla shares and when I'll sell Tesla shares. I'll stop buying Tesla when there are better growth opportunities, like SpaceX or Starlink IPO or when I hit the 1,000 Tesla shares, 
or when Tesla stops growing at 50% year-on-year rate. I'll sell Tesla stock when Tesla no longer becomes the top choice for engineering talent, if Elon sells more than 50% of his Tesla stock, or when Tesla's mission no longer aligns with my values, which is solving big problems for the world or inspiring humanity. Next question, Zanuman asks, what are my realistic price targets for Tesla stock in 2023? 1.6K. Next related question, Dinesh asks, would I continue buying Tesla when it's priced above $1,000? Yes, I would. If you believe that Tesla's stock price would be $8,000 by 2030, whether we're buying it for $800 or $1,200 wouldn't make a big difference. I'll continue buying Tesla stock until I've got a thousand Tesla stock, which will take me around three years. Next question, Skyri asks, when will Tesla hit 10K per share with FSD? I believe maybe 2028. It will still take a few years for FSD to roll out across the world, as well as get government approval. Even if FSD is a clear leader in the industry, other automakers, especially Chinese ones, could offer a good enough solution. It just needs to be safer than human drivers. That gives the market alternatives to FSD, like how Xiaomi phones are a good enough alternative to iPhones for many people. Next, Anthony James asks, if Tesla was an acronym, what would it stand for? Transforming Earth, so life advances. Tesla. Final question, Kelvin asks, anything for my Gigafactory tours that would add to my conviction? Yes, seeing 4680 battery structural packs, rear and front castings, and a preview of Cybertruck production lines. Continue seeking good questions, not just good answers. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.